going to show you how to take your images from this to this. On the left is an image that was automatically stacked and processed by the C-Star Smart Telescope. On the right is the image that I got after a little bit of processing using completely free software. This method will work on any Astro images. It does not have to be from a C-Star. It will also work on DSLR images or images from an Astro camera. I'm also uploading my data to a Google Drive folder and the link is in the description below so you can download all of that data and process along with me if you like. So if you don't already have the software software called Serial installed on your computer. It's a completely free software. You can download it from the link in the description of this video. Once that is done, you can click on the second link in the description of this video, the one titled Serial Script. This is the official directory where you can download scripts. And the script we are downloading is called OSC underscore preprocessing underscore without DBF. At the very right, you can click on this download button and then choose where you want to save the script. I'm just going to save it in this drive. I'll create a folder called script and I will save the script inside this folder. Now we will go to the folder where that script is saved and we just need to modify the script a little bit because I want to use drizzle integration to gain some extra resolution and to increase the size of my C-Star images because they are fairly small. So you can right click on this and click open with and you can choose another app if Notepad is not showing. I always like to edit scripts in Notepad in Windows, but any text editor will work. So click on open with Notepad. Just navigate down to where it says register pp underscore lights and just type in so space dash drizzle, that's it. That's all the editing you have to do and then click file and save. Now you can close that. Just so you remember that we had added that drizzle option in this script to increase the resolution of our images, you can also change the name of it. Uh, just type underscore drizzle. There we go. Now we'll uh, go back to that directory where I had saved scripts and I'll create a new folder called Messier 13 because that's the target I'm going to be processing. And inside that I will create another folder called lights. Now this is the folder we are going to put all of the images from our C-Star or from whatever Astro camera you are using. So we are only interested in the .fit files. I'll copy all of these fit files and I'll go over to my lights folder, open that up and paste all of these fit files of Messier 13. Now open up Cyril. Now, first thing we are going to do is load up that script that we had downloaded and modified earlier. So go to the top right where this hamburger icon is, click on that, click on preferences and down here, navigate to scripts. And this is where you are going to add the location of that script directory. Let's go to that other folder. I just hit the Windows button to bring up the taskbar. And this is the folder where I had saved the scripts in. I'll open up the scripts folder and copy the location from this address bar up top. So just control C or right click and copy and go back to Cyril and paste that in here in Cyril. Then click apply. Now Cyril will automatically load any scripts uh, that were saved in that folder. Uh, we do have to close Cyril and reopen it. I'm going to not have Cyril maximized so it's easier for you to see everything that's going on and we can also move to other folders if we need. Now, if you click on scripts at the top, you can see this is the script that we had modified after downloading. This is one shot color pre-processing without DBF underscore drizzle. That's what we are going to use. Now click on the home button at the very top left and navigate to the folder where we had saved the Messier 13 files. This is the one, I'll double click on that. Now the lights folder is the one we had saved all of those fit files on. Do not click on that. We just need to be in the root directory. So click open and that will open up all the fit files in the Messier 13 folder. And this is also the folder that it will be using for intermediate files. That's also where it's going to save our final stacked image. Now click on scripts, click on one shot color pre-processing without DBF and Cyril will handle all of the aligning and stacking. So Cyril has finished stacking all of those files and in this console, 
under the console tab. You can see everything that Cyril did if you're interested, but you don't need to know what any of that means. This just helps us debug things if something goes wrong. Now we will open up the folder where we had uh, the messy 13 folder where we had saved the lights. But now we see that there is a process folder as well, which Cyril created. We don't need that. And there is a result file called result.fit. This is the file that we are going to need. So you can drag and drop this into Cyril or you can click open and open this file in Cyril. Now you can see that our resulting stacked file is quite dark. That's okay, that's because it's in its linear state, meaning that uh, it hasn't been stretched. All the brightness values that the camera sensor can represent are all represented here without any adjustment. So we'll go to the bottom here where it says linear, click on that click on auto stretch. It's okay if your image looks green, this is completely normal with color cameras and this will be fixed in one of the next steps. First thing we need to do is to crop this image. If you look at the very top here, you can see that uh, there are some stacking artifacts because telescope tracking is rarely perfect. So you just click with your mouse and drag and drop it where you want. Uh, you can also make adjustments afterwards here to the area that you want cropped. Right click and click crop. Next, we need to do background extraction. So we are going to uh, fix this color cast. So go to image processing at the top and click background extraction and click generate. And if you see that there are a lot of red boxes all over the image, um, you, can, you can decrease this a little bit as well. Uh, now, the thing to know about these red boxes is that you don't want any of them on any bright star like this, and you don't want any of them on your actual target, whether it's a nebula or galaxy or cluster. If uh, there are any on there, you can adjust grid tolerance. So if you decrease that value, it will decrease the overall amount of boxes that it places on the background. We just wanna make sure that the background is fairly well covered by these red boxes without getting any of them on the bright stars or the target. Uh, and if you do accidentally get one somewhere on here, just right clicking with your mouse will make them disappear. You don't need to be very precise with this. I'll just click generate. All you have to do now is click compute background and click apply. And as you can see, that green background is gone. Also, the background is very, very uniform. Uh, and if the background looks a little bit noisy right now, that's completely fine. You won't be displaying it like this. We have a few more steps to go right now. Next, we want to do color calibration. So go to the top, click on image processing again, click on color calibration and click on photometric color calibration. Now we need to tell Cyril what object this is. This is Messier 13 uh, or the Hercules cluster. So I'll just click M13 here. There we go, it has found the object. Now down here, it shows the focal length of your telescope and the pixel size of your camera. If these values are not filled in or they are incorrect, you can just uh, select and you can just put in the correct value. And the pixel size of the C-star is 2.9 microns, but because we are using drizzle integration to increase the size and resolution of our image, uh, we have to divide that value by two. So it automatically detected 1.45 microns correctly and then just click OK, click Close. Now the next step we want to do is deconvolution. You can zoom into the image a little bit more if you like by using the mouse wheel. Now click on Image Processing and click on Deconvolution. Deconvolution allows you to sharpen your image. All the default settings here work quite well. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is click Generate PSF. And now this little box pops up at the top right under PSF Preview that shows you the average shape of the stars. Now just hit Apply. Okay, now it's done. And we just click Close. And now if we look at that image, we can zoom in a bit more if needed. We can undo and redo using these buttons at the top. If we undo, redo, undo, redo, you can see 
that the stars did improve quite a bit. Now, if we save this image as a JPEG right now, it would look completely black. Uh, that's because the image is still in its linear format. This is what it actually looks like. Using the auto stretch option here, just stretches it for our viewing without actually affecting the data. So the next step we need to do is to stretch the data. And to do that, we'll click on auto stretch and we'll just set the image back to linear. Now, click on image processing click on generalized hyperbolic stretch. Now this uh, looks kind of scary, but it is not. This is the histogram over here. The very left of the histogram is completely black. So it's a zero value. The right of the histogram is completely white. Now we want our image to end up somewhere in the middle, just like in traditional photography. Uh, but right now, if you look at our linear image on the left, it is very, very dark. So the entire histogram is against the left wall here. So we need to zoom in. If we zoom in to let's say 100 times up here, click enter. Now it has zoomed in to the left part of the image and we can see our histogram a little bit better here. Now we're going to click right in the middle of this histogram. So just underneath this peak, just anywhere in the bottom here. And when you click there on the right, it puts in a value for symmetry point. Now next go up to local stretch intensity and just max that out to 15. Now go to stretch factor and start increasing that and you'll see the image on the left getting brighter. So uh, adjust this stretch factor tab until you can just start to see the target and click apply. Now we'll click reset and now at the top here under color stretch method we will switch over to human weighted luminance. I find that I get better color this way and now we are going to restretch it. So again, click right underneath, right in the middle of this curve. And you can see that the value here under symmetry point has changed. And now set local stretch intensity to maximum again, and then start moving the stretch factor to the right. And you can see by doing it this way, you still retain all of the nice star colors. Stretch the image until you're happy with the fainter parts of your image. So in this case, the fainter part is the outer, uh, outer faint stars of this cluster. If this was a nebula, I would be looking at the faint outer regions of nebulosity. So stretch until you're happy with that. Don't worry about the core getting too bright or the background being too bright. So uh, I'm happy somewhere over here. I think the outer faint stars in the Hercules cluster are showing up pretty well. And now we can start bringing down this local stretch intensity slider and that will increase contrast in our image. And I think that's starting to look quite nice. If you notice that the center of your object starts getting too bright, for example, if you're imaging the Orion Nebula or something like that, you can bring down this highlight protection slider, move that to the left, and you'll notice the core starting to get darker again. Uh, you don't want to overdo it, so I try not to use the highlight protection slider too much. I will uh, usually leave it close to max on most targets. I'll zoom out again. So this is looking pretty good, um, but what I can do is adjust the symmetry point a little bit here now. So you could do that by clicking this plus and minus, and you'll see the background is getting darker as I increase that. And that's just changing the shape of the histogram here. Or if I click on the minus button, it's getting brighter. So I'll use that to adjust it until I'm fairly happy with the background darkness. I don't like to make the background completely black because then you lose a lot of the faint details. And now we can click apply and uh, we can close that. Now at this point, if we notice any green noise in the image or we notice any stars that look a little bit greener than they should, we can remove that by going to image processing and clicking on remove green noise. I'll click on that and just click OK as is. Okay, right, there we go. So there was a little bit of a color cast on the image and now that that has been removed, it looks a lot better. And if your image looks a little bit bland, the stars are not looking very colorful, you can go up to image processing and click on color saturation. And then you can adjust 
the amount of saturation in the image you know you don't want to do something like this so you want to keep it fairly reasonable and if you notice that your background starts to get a little bit noisy or has too much color blotching you can increase this background factor and that will basically do some color noise reduction on your background but in this image we have a fairly good signal to noise ratio so we will leave this where it was at uh, at one so I'll adjust this to somewhere like that. We want to keep it fairly realistic. I think that might still be a little bit too colorful for me, but, uh, but you can adjust that slider to your taste. Click apply. And now we are ready to save our image. So go to the top, click on this little downward facing arrow, and you can save it in the same folder. You can, uh, I like to create a new folder in there and I like to call it final. Now I can give it a name, so I'll call it M13. That was the telescope and the total amount of exposure time. At the bottom right here, you can select what kind of file you want to save it as. If you plan to do any more processing, you can save it as a TIFF file. If you just want to share this image now on social media or send it to family and friends, click on JPEG files and click save. And for quality, I always select 100% for any JPEG files. If we open up that folder, click on the final folder, and in here is our final image. And if I zoom into 100%, um, as you can see, that is uh, fairly detailed. We can see quite a few stars. And on the left here, you can see a tiny little magnitude 15 galaxy that is very, very faint. I can just barely see that with my large 15 inch Dobsonian telescope. So a tiny little telescope like the Sea Star was able to image it. Let me know in the comments if you found that useful and if there are any other tutorials that you want me to make. Thanks again for watching and clear skies.